A 25-year-old client has just undergone knee replacement surgery. He was released from the recovery room and the stretcher bearer has transferred him to his room on the department. The patient attendant and practical nurse transfer the patient from the stretcher to the bed and the nurse immediately conducts a post-operative assessment. Hi, my name is uh, Philip, and I'll be your nurse today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow up. We're gonna look at uh, your vital signs. It's the standard procedure here at the surgery, sur surgical ward. Perfect. Okay. Can I ask you for your full name and tell me where you are? Yeah, uh, my name is Henry Price. Uh, I'm at the hospital. Uh, I've just uh, undergone knee surgery to have a prosthesis implanted. Okay. The identification bracelet remains the best way to verify a client's ID. The nurse asks the client to provide his full name and counter verifies it with his identification bracelet all at once. He asks simple questions to the client to assess his level of consciousness and awareness. This evaluation is crucial in order to determine the risk of respiratory depression occurring following the anesthesia. To do so, the nurse uses the Ramsey scale to assess the level of sedation. In short, the Ramsey score indicates a patient's level of sedation, which is based on the responses the client provides to given stimulus. Okay, so I'm gonna take your uh, vital signs. Uh, just before we start, I'm going to ask you to take a couple of uh, deep breaths. Perfect. The nurse stimulates the client by asking him to take deep breaths. This will favor the elimination of anesthetic agents more quickly and promote better pulmonary expansion. The nurse measures the vital signs in accordance with the standards approved by the health establishment. Measuring the client's vital signs provides the reference data required to monitor his condition as regards real or potential instability or the deterioration of his overall condition. The nurse also assesses the rhythm, frequency, and amplitude of the pulse. To collect complete data pertaining to the pulse, the nurse measures the pulse manually. The evaluation of the breathing must also include the rhythm, frequency, and amplitude. The nurse will end the measuring of the vital signs by taking the client's oxygen saturation and capillary refill time using a fingernail. These measures help to determine peripheral oxygenation and circulation levels. Okay, so your breathing is just perfect. Your pulse is good. Excellent. We're just going to see to make sure the oxygen is going everywhere in your body. So if I can just get to get your finger there. Check your capillary reaction. It's good there. Oops. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check your uh, IV drip. Can you tell me, do you feel any pain where the, uh, where the, uh, the IV drip is going in? Uh, no, no pain there. There's no pain here? No. Okay. It is the nurse's duty to ensure the integrity and proper functioning of the perfusion. In other words, he checks for skin redness, heat, edema, and pain. He also checks for the presence of backflow in the tubing. This rigorous end-to-end -end verification allows to quickly prevent or detect any sign of infiltration into the client's subcutaneous tissues. The nurse carefully verifies the intravenous solution bag to ensure the correct IV medication is being administered to the client, that it matches the prescription in the client's file, and finally checks the expiry date of the medication. Moreover, he verifies the quantity of solution remaining in the bag to plan the exact time the perfusion bag will need to be replaced and thus ensure the continuous feed of the intravenous solution. Finally, the nurse makes sure the flow program on the volumetric pump corresponds to the one prescribed. Okay, so I'm not gonna have a look at your knee. Okay. Can you tell me, is it causing you any pain? Uh, for the time being, no. I had uh, I was given a uh, sedative in the recovery room not too long ago. So. Okay. The nurse verifies the bandage. To do so, he must put on a pair of non-sterile gloves since there is a risk of coming into contact with the client's bodily fluids. Prior to examining the area that underwent surgery, he closes the curtain to ensure the client's privacy. 
He unfastens the Zimmer brace to have a clear view of the entire knee, top, bottom, and sides. He slowly and lightly lifts the leg and, with his gloved hand, touches the backside of the knee to make sure there is no leakage of bodily fluids. He checks the overall condition of the bandage to ensure it is clean and unsoiled. If it is soiled, he will determine if the blood leakage is significant or not and if it is still leaking or has stopped. If the bandage is soiled, the nurse will use a pen to draw a circle around the leakage for monitoring purposes and follow-ups. If the client has a drain, the nurse will also take advantage of the moment to verify it. He will check the drain type, if it is functioning properly, the fluid being functioned, and the quantity that has been drained. Okay, so I'm glad that you're not feeling any pain right now. It's important to let us know if the pain increases at one point, because we don't want to lose control over uh, the pain. Okay, perfect. If the client had been feeling pain, the nurse would have used the PQRSTU pain assessment scale to rank his level of pain. It is essential to tell the client to warn the personnel about any change in the level of pain. Indeed, pain that has increased too much is more difficult to control and will make the client very uncomfortable. Okay, what I have to do next is I'm going to verify the neurovascular status of, uh, of your knee. Okay. Okay. Monitoring the neurovascular status of a limb that has recently undergone surgery is of the utmost importance. Doing so allows to pinpoint and prevent the occurrence of circulatory and pulmonary complications. I'm just going to ask you to uh, wiggle your toes and I'm going to touch your feet. I need you to tell me if you feel me, me touching you and if you feel any numbness whatsoever. Okay. While assessing the neurovascular status, the nurse will always compare the reaction of the limb that has undergone surgery to the one that has not. The latter will be the reference used to determine if the one that has been operated on is normal and without potential complications. Thus, he compares the level of mobility of both limbs. The nurse asks the client to move his toes on both feet. This enables him to check their color, are they pink or of a whitish color. Furthermore, he touches both feet at the same time to compare the level of warmth in both limbs. The nurse assesses the inferior limb's level of sensitivity in order to detect the presence of neurological abnormalities. He also needs to check the level of sensitivity of the limb that has undergone surgery to make sure there is no numbness. Following that, the nurse verifies for the presence of edema on said limb and then conducts a bilateral pulse assessment. He then continues by measuring the palpable distal pulse down the left knee and or the foot pulse, if it is perceptible. Always comparing both limbs, the one that has undergone surgery and the one that has not, the neurovascular status verification is completed by conducting a capillary refill time assessment which indicates if the blood flow in the lower limbs is adequate or not. Okay, well everything looks great here. Perfect, there's no numbness by the way. Okay. The nurse must ensure the permeability of the urinary circuit. He checks to make sure the bladder catheter is draining well and that there are no kinks or bends in the tubing. He verifies the color and quantity of urine that has been drained into the bag. He ties the bladder catheter to the client's leg, which will prevent it from being accidentally pulled out of the urethra, which could cause tissue lesions. The bag must be emptied when needed. If not, the drain will simply stop functioning. Noting down the quantities of urine collected will confirm if the quantity of liquids administered and that of those eliminated balance out. The nurse must continue monitoring the urine output thereafter. Okay, so you feel comfortable right now? I do, thank you. Perfect. So you see over here, the, uh, I have your call, put your call bell on the side of the bed? Yes. Okay, so if ever you feel any, any, any um, any incomfort, or you're not feeling well, or you're more pain, just ring on the call bell and we'll be back. Okay. I'll be back in 15 minutes to do my follow-up checkup. That's great, thank you very much. No problem. Ensuring the client's comfort will help him rest after a surgical intervention. Finally, placing the bell button close to the client enables the ladder to ring for quick assistance whenever necessary.